Texas and Vanderbilt recap. Texas goes on the road into Nashville, wins this game 27-24. Honestly, a game, and I said this afterwards, and I feel it even more after watching it another time, should have won this game about 34-17. That was the real score in my mind of what should have happened if we execute like we should do. Uh, we have not been doing that. We haven't done that since really when yours got hurt. That's the last time we did it. Uh, I was at a wedding when I checked my phone and he's hurt. And ever since that point, this team has not executed at all offensively. And we'll jump into that after we get into this recap. But let's bring up Quinn Ewers. We did talk about him. So Steve Sarkeesian came out after the game and said he played uh, magnificent, fantastic. I forget the adjective he decided to use, but he thought he played very well. Uh, and I think there's a disconnect between the fan base and Steve Sarkeesian, or at least some of the fan base and Steve Sarkeesian. I, on second watch and in the game, I thought Quinn Ewers played pretty well. I actually think overall, I'm going to say it was the second best game of the season. Yes, he had two tip passes. Were they really his fault? Not really. I don't think they were all on him. Uh, but they did hurt. They did suck to have it. Uh, the second one, you can put a little bit of blame on Quinn Ewers. He did not drop his arm angle there, threw into the defender, and that turned into an interception. I don't put a lot of it on Quinn Ewers, but I do put a little bit on Quinn Ewers for that one. Uh, the first one was not his fault. Guy came right down the middle, and it got batted up and intercepted. So that is not good. Needs to get better. Needs to improve there. I think the offensive line communication needs to improve, and we'll talk about that later in this Vanderbilt recap. Uh, hopefully my Wi-Fi gets a little bit better because I see it's lagging. Um, but overall, guys, I can't be too angry at Quinn. I thought there was more confidence that he showed in the pocket. I thought his footwork in the pocket was better than it has been. I didn't think it was great. But I think it's better than it has been, in the, especially in the Georgia game. He still really did not step into throws, guys. That is the main concern I do have right now with Quinn Ewers. Uh, even on that deep ball completed to DeAndre Moore, that slot fade, he didn't step into that throw. That's completely off his back foot. Now, you can throw off your back foot if you have a decent arm, and he does have a decent enough arm. And you anticipate very well. He anticipated that very well, saw it right away, and let it go. You can get away with it then. But if, if there's any split-second decision-making and you're throwing off your back foot, you're really, really going to struggle with that, guys. Uh, and it's going to be interesting if they can get him to step into throws. I think part of the reason for that right now is the way the offensive line has played. The offensive line has not been good, guys. It really hasn't. And Quinn Ewers, I think, did well in this game in spite of the offensive line, in spite of a running game. And we need to get that turned around because, to me, this team – Ceiling is a national championship. I think the floor is nine and three. And right now we're trending more towards the floor, which is a scary thing to say, but it is the truth. So we'll have to see how that goes. But overall, I think uh, Quinn played a decent game, 27 of 37, 288 yards, 10.7 yards average per attempt, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Uh, his Now I will say this, this was tweeted, not by me, Cody Carpentier of Orange Bloods tweeted this out. Average depth of target for Quinn Ewers on the season is 5.9 yards, guys. That is 79th out of 79th of all Division I college quarterbacks. The average depth of target has not been there for Quinn Ewers. So he is not forcing the ball down the field for whatever reason. Now there's multiple things. Again, watching the games back a couple times and watching the games live, I can give you a couple reasons for that. One, people are playing off of our wide receivers. That is definitely the case in some of these. There's definitely five to seven yards off. And if guys, if they're going to do that, go to the screen and we see that or go to the swing pass and we see that constantly. And I have no issue with that when they do that. Uh, another reason for that is the off for long developing routes down the field to be able to push the ball. Guess what you have to have time. You have to have probably about three to three and a half seconds on average to push the ball down the field consistently with the lack of running game we have and the lack of offensive line push now in the passing game as well, you really cannot do that. Number three, this relies solely on Quinn Ewers. He does not step into the throws enough. He does not anticipate enough and he does not release it early enough to push the ball down the field. That is solely on Quinn. You can put that on Quinn Ewers. That is on him. You cannot put any of the other stuff on Quinn Ewers. If a defense is going to give you five to seven yards, you take that. I think it was Rich Gangarello with the Broncos. I'm a Broncos fan. He said, you do not go broke taking a profit. That is a profit. If someone's going to give you five yards, you need to take the five yards. 
But the problem is right now, and the reason why we can't hit these balls deep is because the way teams are playing is because they know we can't run the football. You know what running the football does? It allows play action in deep shots down the field. It allow it makes a defense think. And when we're not running, that is not on Quinn Ewers. That is on the offensive line. But overall, I thought Quinn Ewers played a solid football game. If I had to grade it, I would say it's a B-minus football game. Wasn't great. Wasn't terrible. If we got a B minus Quinn Ewers performance and we also got better offensive line play throughout the year, I would sign up for that right now. I would sign up for that. I don't think it's going to happen. I think this offensive line will get better. Now, I will say this in saying that it has to get better during the bye week. This is the last week for me. And I said this post game to where I think you're going to see a slightly big enough change to where it makes a difference. Everything else from here on out is going to be minute if we do not get it fixed during the bye week. So it's going to be interesting uh, what will happen. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens with the team during this bye, um, bye week. But now let's jump into the thing that I this concerns me the most. And we'll get into this even more when we talk about how this team competes for a national championship or if they can. Uh 11 sacks the past two games given up by the offensive line and the running backs. I'm going to put that in there because the running backs, Jaden Blue gave up a sack. He did not pick up a guy coming up, coming up the middle, totally whiffed, and it got Quinn Ewers sacked. Uh, penalties have been concerning as well. Like, it's a combination of so many things between the running backs and offensive line. Let's just start out with this. Offensive line does not get enough push in the running game, period. Number two, we refuse to run inside zone. Refuse. I think we ran it a couple times during the game. I didn't track how many. I do think I saw it at most a handful of times. That is not enough. Not enough. It's all outside zone, and we're struggling with that right now. We're getting, uh, we're doing bad work with our feet, and we're getting holds because of it. Also, bad work with our hands. Um, and then number three. The running backs sometimes, honestly, aren't hitting the hole. Trey Wisner's the best at it. You see why Jaden Blue's not getting as many carries because he does miss holes sometimes. He overruns them. Uh, Trey Wisner's a little more patient, allows it to develop, and then hits it better, but not all the time. You see that sometimes, which is fine, uh, but it's a little bit too much right now. And then, again, in the passing game, they are not good enough at blocking right now. And listen, I gave Cedric Baxter some shit at the beginning of the season. Uh, I said I didn't know why they went with Jonathan Brooks or why he was starting over Jonathan Brooks last year. I still don't know why. But let me tell you, I completely understood why he was going to be the number one back coming into this year. After watching what we have at running back, he's by far and away the best option. He does everything well. There's nothing I look at and he's like spectacular that, but there's nothing I look at and he does bad at either. So we're really missing him, especially running um, or blocking, blitzing um, defenders. And then the offensive line in general, it seems a lack of communication on certain things because guys sometimes are running wide open to the quarterback. Uh, it seems they get kind of poor on the technique, especially the right side of the offensive line. DJ Campbell and Cam Williams are struggling when the play's going on and then pre-snap with penalties. If they're not getting a hold, they're getting a false start pre-snap, especially Cam Williams. That's more Cam Williams. So that needs to change. We just consistently shoot ourselves in the foot. There was Someone read this. One of the drives, it was Brooks Austin. He does a really good job on YouTube. Eight, there was a drive with eight plays for 13 yards. Anyone want to know how that's possible? Because you consistently shoot yourself in the foot. That's the. But I will say this. This is also a positive because those are things you can change. You can change that, hopefully. Hopefully. Some teams you can't. Some teams you can't. So it's kind of a coin flip. We'll see if this team can do it. Because it is penalties. It's lack of discipline. It's lack of locking on and engaging in the moment, in my opinion. We'll see if that can get changed. But that's the biggest thing to me is just getting this team engaged on a down-in and down-out basis to do their job. If they do that, they have the talent. And the left side, I'm speaking, this is to the right side, honestly. Kevin Banks still doing a damn good job. Hayden Connor's actually been pretty damn good. Jake Majors has been fine. I think he probably could communicate better and help out the right side more. But other than that, I have no problems with the center all the way to the left. I have major issues with Cameron Williams and um, DJ Campbell. But everything else, not that angry about. I did like that they gave Jane Blue more carries. Obviously, he went from 0 to 10, so that helps out. 
but we just have to see more there. It'll be interesting. We, But guys, to do everything that we want to do, which is push the ball down the field more, we have to be able to run the ball. That is where this starts, and that is where this ends. And that means it's on the offensive line and running backs. And it's kind of funny because in the Georgia game, I defended the offensive line to a certain extent, and I put most of the blame on Quinn Ewers. Total opposite game. The offensive line game in the Vanderbilt game was way worse than it was in the Georgia game. If we would have played like that versus Georgia, Georgia would have had 10 sacks. They would have had 10 sacks. They were awful versus Vanderbilt. Truly awful. I think it was the worst game. People are going to like, how can you say that? Look at the numbers. We gave up four sacks to Vanderbilt. They don't have anyone on that defensive line that's going to be a first, second, or even a third round pick. Georgia at least has three or four guys that are going to be one, uh, one through three um, picks, one first or second or third round picks. They have like three or four of those guys. So that it, seven to four versus the teams, way worse game for Vander versus Vanderbilt, in my opinion. Now, we can talk about positive things, and here we go. The defense. Defense has been phenomenal. And let me shout this guy out because I didn't. I shouted out the other safety, Michael Tapp, SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Fully deserved it. Phenomenal. Forced fumble. Inter I think he had two interceptions. Did he have two interceptions? I know he had one. Fantastic game for him. Jelani McDonald. First start and played phenomenal. Guys, we've gotten to a place at the safety position. Think about this last year. We were running out Michael Taft, Keaton Crawford, and Jaron Thompson and sprinkling in and starting a lot of the cases, uh, Derek Williams. When Derek Williams went down, look at the second half versus Washington versus the first half versus Washington. We are we were way better with Derek Williams on the field, and I still think we would be slightly better. But there's virtually no drop-off when you can rotate Michael Taft Andrew Makuba, and he didn't play in this game as well, Jelani McDonald and Derek Williams, that may be the best foursome at safety. I don't even know. I don't think Earl Thomas and Blake Gideon had anyone near that behind them. Like, our safety room is four deep. It's going to be interesting later in the year because we saw Kobe Black, by the way, fantastic game for him as well. Xavier Phil, to me, if he'll get some playing time. That's going to be very interesting going forward because you have a bye week. If you if he, you're if you're 50 50 on him, this will probably determine this bye week if he plays at all during this year. Uh, I don't think he's taken at, barely any snaps at safety this year. But Kobe Black, Jelani McDonald, fantastic for your first major time out there because that was a real game and a real test. So that was nice to see them, and they both played phenomenal. Honestly, if Kobe Black could replicate that game from here on out, he's probably actually better than Manny Muhammad has been this year. If he could do that, he can't do that. I'm going to tell you right now, he can't because he's a freshman. It's going to be inconsistent, but he was phenomenal in the Vandy game. Uh, but overall, secondary has been great. Front four has been good enough. I don't think it's great, but it's good enough. We really didn't get after Diego Pavia much sack-wise. We did get a little bit more pressure than we did versus Georgia, but obviously big talent difference in the offensive lines there. Linebackers was, was, were good again. Uh, Leona LaFau would have had an interception if it wasn't for, you know, Vernon Broughton Spear, or did he have an interception? I forget. I forget who caught the interception when Vernon Broughton decided to jump in the air and spear a guy in his head. Moronic play. Don't know why he did it. We're going to miss him in the first half versus Florida. I don't think that's a gigantic deal because Florida doesn't have a great offensive line, but just a dumb play. And that's honestly kind of <laughs> – honestly, that play is like basically what Texas is doing right now. Guy throws you an interception, and you decide to jump, leave your feet, and go like this into his head for no reason. No reason whatsoever. You could have jumped and literally shoved him. It wouldn't have been a penalty. But you decide to spear him in the head, and that's what happened. So that was kind of an, uh, an encapsulation of everything Texas has done to themselves. This is the perfect play to encapsulate that. Perfect. That's what it, that's what we are at this point. Uh, defense, I trust more than the offense. Offense needs to get it together, running the ball and protecting Quinn. And if Quinn can just build off it, that performance from Vanderbilt, I think we'll be fine with him. I'm kind of more – I didn't say after the Georgia game I thought I was going to be more worried about Quinn. I'm more worried about the offensive line at this point. I am. And it sucks to say that because I, I never thought I'd say that. I I thought this offensive line was going to be amazing. But 11 sacks in two games, even if, if some of it is on Quinn, that's too many. Let's say four of them are on Quinn. You've given up seven sacks in two games. That's ridiculous, especially Vanderbilt being one of those. Vanderbilt, you should have held to one or two. Georgia, you should have held to four, maybe five I could give you. But just ridiculous at this point. It's got to get better if we want to win a national championship. Hell, if we want to make the playoffs, it's got to get better. Because Arkansas, especially Texas A&M, will be able to take advantage of that even more. 